what's up, students? As we continue our series entitled Panic Attack, I just want to set up a conversation for you to continue later tonight concerning the fear of rejection. How do you know if you're someone who deals with the fear of rejection? Here's what I want everybody to do for me real quick. Everybody take two fingers, all right, just like this. Now take your other hand, hold it out. Put your fingers on your wrist. I want everybody, every campus, yes, even you, Anthem Campus, you can do it. All right, you with me? You got, you got it? Now, do you have a pulse? If not, remain calm, remain calm. Guys, I'm sure there's some highly qualified women in the room who can give chest compressions and mouth to mouth. So just slowly raise your hand, and I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, put your hands down, freshman boys. It's never gonna happen for you, all right? This is not your Smalls and Windy Peppercorn moment. Do you know, what I, you know what I'm talking about when I say Smalls and Windy Peppercorn? Have you seen this movie, The Sandlot? If you haven't, then whenever you decide to find a pulse, then go home from church, rent The Sandlot, it will change your life. All right, where was I? The fear of rejection. I, I, think, I think everybody, um, I think this hits us all uh, to some extent. And uh, there's, there's something I wanna share with you about fear before we move forward, and I think this is so important to how we're gonna understand this fear today. It goes like this. Behind fear is usually an unmet need. It's usually an unmet need. What do I mean by that? Well, if you, if you have a fear of missing out, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, your unmet need may be authentic community. If you have a fear of failure, we've talked about this, your unmet need may be just inner peace. Maybe you're just missing words of encouragement in your life. If you fear clowns, anybody fear clowns? Well, your unmet need may be a baseball bat, because clowns are freaky. Anybody with me? All right, all right. Well, if you fear rejection, that's what we're talking about. If you fear rejection, maybe your unmet need is just a strong sense of value and self-worth. And those who fear rejection, I, I, I really think, just struggle with that. And, and really, I really think what you're looking for, what I'm looking for, because I know this hits me too, are really three things. To be liked, wanted, and valued. Can you say that with me? Liked, wanted, and valued. And the fear of rejection is just gonna cause you to question whether or not that's the case. Am I liked? Do people want me around? Do people actually care about me? That's why I, I don't think it's uncommon for those who fear rejection to fixate on people pleasing. It's, it's just all about this unmet need in our life. This constant reminder is what we're looking for. We want to know, I'm liked. Yes, people want me around. Yes, people value me. And it may not also be uncommon for someone who fears rejection to socially isolate themselves. Now, why would someone do something like that? Well, because if you put yourself out there in social settings, you have a greater chance of being rejected. So you just don't put yourself out there. You just kind of hang in the shadows behind the scenes. You don't want to get rejected. Doesn't that make sense? Now, like all fears, the level at which you face the fear of rejection largely depends on the degree to which you face rejection personally. So maybe like on a small scale, you face something like bullying. Or maybe you were abandoned by uh, like a group of friends. Or maybe you've been broken up with. Freshman boys, it's probably recently. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of picking on the freshmen a lot. Anyways. Maybe on a larger scale, if you deal with the fear of rejection, maybe in your past you've dealt with some form of verbal abuse from someone who was put in authority above you. Or maybe you grew up in an environment that was just extremely negative 
I mean, we're talking like doors slamming all the time, people just being hard on each other. Maybe your household has zero encouragement going on. Maybe even in your home environment, maybe this happened when you were younger, a parent left the family. And it, it's just caused this deep-seated fear to well up in your life called rejection. Now, in my personal story, what fueled this for me was bullying. Now, when I was um, like nine, 10 years old, uh, there were these eighth graders in my neighborhood, um, and as I would encounter these guys, they, man, they just totally picked on me, um, and that would escalate over time, and, and they pretty much ripped apart my sense of value and self-worth. And unfortunately for me, um, it didn't end with those eighth grade boys. Um, a pattern of bullying would continue on through my teenage years. And the more this occurred in my life, the more, the more that I just began to question, you know, am I valued? I, I questioned my own worth. I began having these negative thought patterns get stuck into my head and eventually those thought patterns began to shift into my heart and I began crafting this storyline of how I thought other people viewed me. I'll share some of how that story went for me. Jared, you're not all that liked. Jared, do people really want you around? Jared, you're weak. And last, Jared, only your mom and dad value you. Kind of a sad story. Not liked, not wanted, not valued. Now, none of those storylines were actually true, but my feelings were just digging me into this rut. And sadly, I don't think I'm the only one who deals with this stuff. I, I don't think I'm the only one who's found myself in a rut of rejection. In fact, for some of you listening right now, my story would just make uh, the, yours, compared to your story, it'd probably just look like sunshine and rainbows. Like you're dealing with some legit scary stuff. So how are we supposed to deal with this? How do we deal with the fear of rejection? How do we stop the panic attack? I believe if we're gonna stop the panic attack, we have to start telling ourselves a different story, a story not based on how other people see us. We have to start telling ourselves the truth about who we are. Who are we? How, how, do, we, how do we find the truth? Well, the truth is, it's not people who define us. It's not moments that make us from any rejection, we can always recover. That line is so important. There is somebody somewhere on some campus, I'm telling you, you need to hear that. I'm gonna say it one more time. From any rejection, you can always recover. Why can you recover? Well, it's because our sense of value and self-worth is it's rooted, it's established, not in who man says we are, but in who our maker says we are. Who does God say we are? Well, the Bible is jam-packed with all kinds of statements on who God says we are. I just wrote down some of my favorites, some of the ones that really stick out to me. Psalm chapter 139 says this, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Genesis 127 says, I'm an image bearer of God. Romans chapter five, verse eight says, even at my worst, my worst, I'm loved. Galatians 2.20 says, Christ lives in me. Colossians 3.23 says, I don't have to please people. The only person that I'm trying to please on planet earth is my heavenly father. Colossians 1.11 says, the power of God strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 says, I can face any circumstance, any circumstance. Why? Because Christ strengthens me. 
2 Timothy 1.7 says, I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, of discipline. And the last one, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 15. I have nothing to fear. Students, you have nothing to fear. When we begin rooting and establishing our value and our self-worth in who God says we are, Fear just loses grip in our lives. And here's how I know that. It's because of what 1 John 4, 18 says. It says, perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Students, don't miss that. The only perfect love available in this world is found in Jesus, only Jesus. When you trust him, when you invite him into the center of your life, he makes even the darkness tremble. Don't those words sound familiar? We sing them here all the time. Even the darkness tremble. He silences every fear, every fear. When you listen to the storyline that God offers you, the opinions of others, they just begin to fade away. Your confidence begins to grow, and what you find is that through God's eyes, you've never been more liked, wanted, and valued. He completely meets all your needs. All you have to do, students, is believe it, hold on to it, and never let it go. Students, I'm going to finish up here, and I just want to pray for you and just, just ask that as we move on through our night, that fear would just lose its grip on us as we center ourselves on who God says we are. Would you pray with me? Jesus, thank you so much that you are perfect love, that you cast out every fear. Jesus, I know that there are students on different campuses tonight and they're, they're dealing with a deep rooted fear of rejection because of something awful from their past, things that they've faced, they're questioning their value and their self-worth. I pray that they would hear loud and clear from you, Jesus, that they're liked, wanted, and valued. That they would look to you, Jesus, to your life and what you did on their behalf, and they would never question how value, valuable they are through your eyes. Help us to realize that. Help fear to lose its grip. In Jesus' name, amen.